In this episode, I'm gonna share with you five buzzer patterns that are sure to catch you a lot of fish. What is up guys, welcome back to another video. I hope you're all keeping safe and well. If you are a returning subscriber, it's good to see your face again. And if you are new here, my name is Reese, and I make fly fishing videos and tutorials that will help you catch more fish. So if you would like to learn more, please press that red subscribe button and smash that bell so that you don't miss out on future videos. Okay, so it's prime time buzzer season. So what does that mean? Well, it means that all the fish have now woken up and are fixated largely every day on a regular food source of coronamid or buzzer. So what does that mean for us as anglers? It probably is the best time of year right now to be a trout angler. You have the option of catching a lot of fish, overwintered fish, and probably some of the best takes you will get all year. So at the end of this video, I will share with you a video that covers the whole buzzer life cycle as well as the methods and how we adopt them. But the purpose of this video is to go through five patterns that I have complete confidence in when I'm buzzer fishing. So let's jump straight in. So let's hit the ground running. It's the beginning of the season, it's the end of March and the buzzers are now starting to come off. What are you gonna go for? I tend to like something that tries to cover a black buzzer or something that has some hemoglobin in it. For that, I tend to go for a claret spanflex buzzer. And all it is is black thread, red spanflex as a rib, a UV thorax cover, and some bayard cheeks. The reason why I picked this buzzer early on is largely because of the color. We've got that transition where we've got bloodworm coming from the bottom, which is normally a winter staple food source, onto the buzzers. So where this buzzer pattern really succeeds is in the fact that that claret colour just has that element of haemoglobin in the buzzer, which I just think works. Proof is in the pudding. It's a very good early season point fly and is normally the first buzzer that I will fish at this time of year. Okay, and then number two, a stripped quill red butted buzzer. So this pattern is very simple. It's made up of a red thread butt, stripped quill all the way through the body, goose by your cheeks again, and a UV thorax. Now this is the second fly you will see with a UV thorax cover. Most of the time I will fish buzzers that either have a UV thorax cover or no cover at all. I personally haven't done well with a pearl thorax cover but it's all about confidence really. So with this pattern, you will notice that the fly itself is a lot lighter in color, and that's on purpose. As the water temperature begins to warm up through April into May, you will find that the color of the buzzer will change to be a more beige fawn color. So this pattern works really well on Rutland and Grafham. We actually tied these for Rutland and Grafham, and then brought them back and fished them on our smaller still waters and found that they worked. So if you're out of the water in late April or May and you can see that there are fawn buzzers in the water, switch to a pattern like this. Now then I just wanna mention two quick things before we jump into the next set of patterns. If you're finding these patterns at all helpful, please give this video a thumbs up. It always helps the channel and helps this specific video. And secondly, just to keep the fly time police off my back, none of these patterns are mine. These are well-established patterns that have stood the test of time and are used by a lot of UK anglers already. <laughs> So we are going smaller now and we are going for a pattern that will really come to the fore as those fish begin to switch off the brighter buzzers, the Vicar buzzer. Now the Vicar buzzer comes in a lot of different colour variations and the world's your oyster with these, you can come up with loads of different things. I quite like as basic and as subtle as you can get them. You might need to play around a little bit with the colourings, so gold and silver, pearl and red are very common as well but this is just my confidence fly, basically. So a Vicar buzzer will really come into the fore when you're fishing on pressured fish, especially on a small still water. So come June, July, when the fishing starts to get tough and the fish have switched off your natural colours, go for something subtle like this and you'll be surprised at how effective it can be. Okay, and then moving on to fly number four, the Wicked White Buzzer. So the original Wicked White Buzzer is made with white paint as cheeks, normally tulip paint. I don't have any white tulip paint, so I've had to do the poor man's version, which is just tied with white goose by your cheeks. Again, this is a part that I fish very small, regularly fish it on a size 14, and you will find at some fisheries that some buzzer hatches, the buzzers will actually have 
a bright white cheeks as opposed to that orangey hue. This is where a buzzer like this can really exceed. So if you find that at your local fishery, the buzzer hatches you get when you spoon the fish, if the buzzers have quite faint or quite white cheeks, turn to this fly and hopefully it can work for you too. Okay, and then the final buzzer to look at is the two-tone buzzer. This pattern has proven itself time and time again, particularly on small still waters. It works really well on Elodyne, it works really well on Chatton, amongst a lot of other fisheries. And I think the success of this pattern is the profile and is that two-tone colour. That two-tone colour in the water just separates your buzzer from perhaps the natural buzzers that are around and gives the fish a honing point to zone in at. So with that pattern, I will usually fish it straight under an indicator just by itself, normally at the end of the year. Now, if you would like to learn more about buzzer fishing, why not check out this video here? And YouTube seems to think that you would like to see this video here. If you found this at all helpful, please give it a like. And if you haven't subscribed already, please consider subscribing. My name is Reese. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week. You can call me stupid. Yes, you can call me sheep.